Katie Siegel. Katie Siegel. Katie Siegel. Yeah, yeah, right. So she's got that kind of voice where like it's attractive. There's a girl at Bridgewater that had this attractive voice. And all, like, these guys were, like, sending her love letters. Oh my God. So it became, like... That's so creepy. Yeah, it, it was crazy, but she played into it. So, like, she actually would, like, read out letters and, like... <laughs> oh, and, my like, God. talk to the... It was, it was getting really weird. Uh, yeah. Hope she's okay. <laughs> don't, don't really know how to do yeah. Be the one person who was, like, you know, kidnapped, living in a basement. I had not hear from her since 20, 2009. <laughs> I wonder what happened. Yeah. She has a family now. Probably nice house. family she kids. Probably has a family kids. Alive. Nice house. Married a guy in a Fortune 500 company. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I just want to be a radio DJ and then podcast happens. I'm like, oh, yeah. show this handsome mug on the camera. That's all right. <laughs> it's cute enough for, for this. <laughs> it's average. Just it's average. Just average. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> so wait, how old are you then? Me? I'm only 29. Oh, wow. So you guys are like... Yeah. So I'm definitely the baby of the group. Christ. Well, how old are you? Mama. Take a guess. 22. No. 24. 23. That's not bad. No. I we, regret every life choice so far. We fucking baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm a child. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> you, regret, you regret every ch- life choice? Not every life choice, but probably like 60%. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. It's paying my bills, so you know what? I'm going to take it with a grain of salt. It's not fully paying mine, so... It's alright, Chad. You can move in with me. Me and Nicole. <laughs> Just move in here. You guys can live in the spare bedroom. <laughs> I mean, we'll take the basement. How about that? You'll have a second washer and dryer, so your water bill will be twice as high. <laughs> you have to ins- you have to install a shower, though. I'm not going upstairs to shower. <laughs> Just saying. It's all right. But yeah, for the most part, it's a lot of just, like... It's weird to sit back and think about, like, where everything sits. In life in general? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah. Like, how you ended up... Wait, how did you end up doing archaeology? I... This is a point five, by the way. Get over it. Oh, this is it? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Oh, we're we're, we're on to it? Just yeah. sneaking you in. Oh, I, I thought we were never going to do an official, like... <laughs> no, dude, I've been... Click, take, and I've then... been recording for the last two minutes now. As oh, soon you as you have? started talking about Bridgewater, I was just like... Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah we're back with John. He's still here. You didn't even tell me. It's fine. Um, I like to catch a can. Yeah, like I was, yeah, I was being all comfy. I, mean, I, was I was being all comfy. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. Like, that's the thing. Um, it, it's nicer to like see you sit back because you actually get into like conversation rather than like you have to act for the camera. Okay. Like this isn't as like formal. This is just a point five, so it's a halfway. How did I get into archaeology? Yeah. Like, what got you to where you are today? I wanted to be an engineer when I was really young, right? Mm. And then I learned that that I had to deal with math every day. <laughs> And I was good at math, but I hated doing it because it's math. And the teacher certainly beat that one out of me, so I said, meh. And then um, I went to North Kingstown High School for my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And I was transferred to Hendry. <laughs> That's where I went. It's all right. East Providence is better. I know. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, <laughs> he admitted it. It's here first. Caught me off guard. Sorry. It's fine. Um, and... Uh, when I was in NK, I wanted to do, uh, like, oceanography. Then I found out about archaeological oceanography. Then I found out there's nothing in archaeological oceanography for jobs. <laughs> so I was just like, I'll just do archaeology. And then I was like, wait, you can get a job in that? And then I found out that you can actually get paid to do archaeology. So I was like, well, okay, I guess you can do this. Um, so that's what I did. And I ended up doing uh, anthropology and archaeology. So just the studying of people. And behaviors and cultures in general and looking at the past so like to distill it for like the average idiot you get to play around in the dirt and get paid to do it for the and most, find cool stuff for the most part yes all right and the the cool stuff we find in the dirt is uh you know uh sometimes like it's historic stuff from bottled glass and like <laughs> old ceramics people used to use and nails and and all this cool stuff sometimes toys mm-hmm. um it's it's such a variety of stuff to, you know, we, we live on, an, we live in an area of the world where there is an indigenous population that was here, so we find a lot of the, their ancestral, rem, well, not actual physical remains, but, like, we try not to. I should really clarify that. I mean, look, the Trail of Tears was a thing. Oh, well, no, it was. It totally was. I mean, all, all this, all these horrible <laughs> things happened. I mean, all, like, yep. not only just the Trail of Tears, we're talking, like, you know, uh, you, you can you can talk to uh, Native Americans today, First Nations today, 
and and there's a good portion that went to these uh, reform schools to beat their culture out of them, literally. Uh, so it's really this like, it's it's kind of a sad cycle, but it's just wow. you got to raise this awareness to understand like, wow, that that really sucks. Yeah. But you know, you're still around today. Let's try to make it a better place together, kind of thing. Um, so sometimes we you know we do find um, you know like eight thousand year old sites. You know, uh, I found in, like an eight thousand year old site in Massachusetts, and uh, you kind of look back and go, like, "Wow, that's really old." But it's the ancestors of these people, and you, it kind of tells this really crazy story about how not only they lived in their environment back then, but how the environment's changed to today. Yeah. So you can kind of play around with like what happened then, what's going on now, and then you can look at like now and be like, "Oh no," <laughs> you know, industry. Is dumping toxins into rivers and it's killing fish populations off. Well, how do we change that? Or wait, there was this plant species here, and sometimes it's because of climate changing and stuff. But yeah, and sometimes it's just you know, people just harvest this kind of tree and it's it's dying out, and now we got to protect. It. It, look at look at today's issue of like the bees are now on the endangered species list. Yeah. So how do we rectify that? So it's kind of just trying to okay. So for the future generations, how do we fix these issues? so that we can have a better world for tomorrow. That's really the focus of what we can do, is try to rectify. Didn't scientists find a way to make honey without bees? Maybe. Oh, I'd love to see that. I he, think there was an article well, where he probably did. Here's the problem. The honeybee is an invasive species to America. It was brought over around the same time as the pilgrims came around, and they pretty much wiped out most of the bee population that was in America. Bees, butterflies, there was a whole vast variety of things that were pollinators, then the honeybee was brought over, and it pretty much obliterated all of that. Bees and earthworms. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy to think, like, this wasn't here at the time. Like, something so small. Like, yay big. Just but, like, but, but, it, but it's kind of like playing that chaos theory, uh, like, line. Like, if you, if, you were, if you were a time travel with a time machine, and you go back in the past, and you swat a mosquito on your shoulder, and it changes the whole trajectory of the future. <laughs> the tsunami. You know, like, that kind of thing. It's, yeah, yeah it, it's kind of interesting to think like that sometimes, but yeah, uh, no, but it, it, it definitely makes an impact. Even the smallest things can make an impact. Mm. I mean, the, uh, here we go. Uh, things like disease. Yeah. A time period I'm looking at is when Europeans initially made contact with the indigenous populations of North America. Okay. Uh, specifically, I'm working with the Mi'kmaq, or going to be working with the Mi'kmaq. Um, hopefully. Hello. And, um. <laughs> hopefully you don't see this. Yeah, no, well. If you do, I hope it, I hope it's the right thing I'm saying. But but essentially, when Europeans came over, they brought over diseases that these populations weren't accustomed to. Like they biologically were like, not accustomed uh, to. They just didn't know about it. And so it's box. yes. Yeah. And so it doesn't utter. You know, you're talking about like seventy to eighty percent of these populations dead. Yeah. It so much so that when the the pilgrims arrived, the Puritans arrived to Plymouth, which was Patuxet. They found bleached bones because no one was alive or well enough to bury their own people. That's how inv- like that's how it just decimates. And this is something you can't see. So how do you deal with something you don't know and you can't see? So you know it's really like it's like an alien invasion, and then all of a sudden everybody gets the cold and starts dying, and then you go, oh no. <laughs> it's like Jim was coughing the other day, and now he's dead. Well. Yep. And then you start coughing, or someone else you know starts coughing. Oh no no no! It's no. like all right, go leave. Oh, Bye. What, what was that film by? I'm now I'm thinking. Um, oh, Contagion. Is it is it is it a twist? Who, who is that? Who is that director? What a twist? M Night Shyamalan. Oh my god! Uh, oh, and, and that one is that is that it with the trees and yeah. stuff and Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. <coughs> oh my god! Don't go out. The trees will get you. Well, but that's seriously like you can't see it, but it's something's there. affecting. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like uh, everyone's going on about. How the ice is melting and how it could potentially release another pathogen that we haven't seen in thousands and thousands of years. And it's like, if it's a truly viable source, it's a very understated thing. And it's why it comes, like, not to try to shift the subject so much, but, like, to just make a point of it. Like, you hear people who are like, oh, I don't vaccinate my kids. It's like, vaccinations helped stop polio. They've helped stop smallpox. They've helped stop thousands of diseases that have just like crippled human beings for such a long time and you're willing to take your child and ruin their life by more or less not 
helping them with something that could quite possibly save them from another day of harm. Yeah, and it's and there, we're finding a resurgence of these diseases now because of people that aren't vaccinated by the vaccinating their kids. And and it's kind of scary that like you're getting these diseases that you haven't heard of since like the 1800s yeah. coming back with a vengeance and you kind of go, well, there's something to it. Uh, so vaccinate your kids. Uh, don't mean, yeah, whatever. Uh, but um, yeah, no, it's it's kind of crazy like how even, yeah, the environmental change that we're going through now with the, the ice caps melting and, and the, the fluctuation in weather. And look, we've got volcanoes going off in Guatemala and Hawaii that are just doing some uh, interesting things, things to the environment. Yeah, yeah, whatever whatever spews out, there's gases that we don't see yep. infect, affecting the environment and uh, the ice caps melting. And it, what's going to happen? Now, I'm not a scientist in this field per se, but what I've been kind of going for, now people have been fixated on global warming. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Al Gore. And yeah, to an extent. But what's happening is, is like when... When the fresh water sources of these caps melt, you're basically making this, the, the ocean water less, uh, it, there's less salt in it now. Salinated. You, yeah, yeah. yeah there's, the salinity has is, is gone down because now you have fresh water going in. So what happens when it freezes? It's going to freeze at a lower level. So what we're actually potentially looking at when we should be, it should be a possibility. It should be on the table as a potential little ice age. And the last time we had a little ice age, was in in the 1600s, right? Yeah. And and uh, this is not something that's foreign. This could this could certainly happen, and it's potentially at the layout. I mean, global warming could certainly be something as well. But again, what's going to happen? Is this, are we going to go into a water world state where we're going to have people with gills eventually, or like, you know, like what is going to happen to to the world we live in? We should be we should be cautious. Well, like, I do believe in actual global warming. You think it speeds up the natural climate change and all that? Um, I never really bought, personally, I never really bought into the, the title of global warming. I know that the climate has changed in the past and it's going to change in the future. And there's certainly something to the population of humans that is affecting it. Yeah, because like history shows anything, it's a natural occurrence that happens in the earth. And all yeah, but, but but if something goes out of balance and affects it even further, then things are going to spiral a little bit yeah. faster. But I wouldn't, I, I don't like putting a label on it because how do you know that's the end game? Yeah. You know, like, it, oh, the seas are going to boil. Is that, are you sure 110% that's going to happen? Or is it going to be like an ice age? And we just had no idea. You know, everybody put their winter jackets away because it's all oh, global warming. Ice age. We don't know, but the only thing we can do right now is try to try to make try to be as eco friendly, I guess, for lack of better terms, uh, with the environment. Well, it's like when people bring up the fact of like um, Tesla, like Tesla being the, one of the big proponents of it. It's like, yeah, you're bringing in a zero emissions car, but it's still creating emissions because you have to generate that electricity somehow. Yeah, that's like, you know, you just plug in your plug in your phone or plug in something and you're not wasting, but there's like a coal plant behind that that's helping the electricity, you know. There's always something else that's being done. And it's like, you and, look at Europe and they're like, oh yeah, we've, like, there are countries who have run without using coal or any other degree of uh, biodegradable fossil fuel that can sustain itself. And like, it even was brought up uh, in Europe, the Tomac reactor, it's a fusion reactor, uh, where they've achieved... achieved 15 million degrees Kelvin, if not a higher temperature than that, which is a hot enough temperature to sustain fusion of atoms, which produces more energy and, if not, uh, produces a cleaner and more viable fuel source because it creates atoms further down the line, which you can then use to reproduce said uh, occurrences. Mm. The only issue is that it uses a specific degree of hydrogen, which is extremely hard for us to get our hands on. And there's a very finite source of it in the entire world plus you also have to think about like if you create mass there's a uh, further proponent of the idea that it's going to create a gravity well which on itself could start to absorb things and it's just there's a long line of things that could go forward oh, yeah. with it. but fusion is probably the most viable source outside of solar wind tidal normal green sources of energy yeah and and that's and that's a, a completely viable option and but Personally, my warning would be is like, okay, what happens if it gets out of your control? Yeah. Oh no, that's bad news. Because then you look at Chernobyl and it's just like, exactly. Yeah, there's your case study, and you know it's gonna be worse than that. Ugh. 
Well, like, you know, that's the big difference between fusion and fission. Fusion is like an atom bomb going off, and that's mm-hmm. what happened in Chernobyl. They were doing tests to see if they could run down the timer before they could get it to restart itself by using energy runoff. Mm-hmm. The issue is that the energy runoff wasn't far enough to support the generators to activate the fuel, activate the pumps to push fresh water into the system. So the system itself cracked, created an explosion uh, because of a buildup of steam, caused all of the uranium and uh, it's not tungsten graphite to melt down into the groundwater and cause a larger problem, which they're still not looking at today. Oh no, no, no. So fusion's the cleaner alternative but it's also the significantly more dangerous because if it gets out of your hand you're looking at one of two options giant gravity well that absorbs the entire planet or black hole that absorbs the entire planet however you want to choose your poison it's going to come up it would make a great film oh yeah it would um yeah it wouldn't happen right away this horrible dystopia i think makes for a perfect cinema but yeah like i mean i'm completely for the green energy alternatives like you know the wind solar um even hydro stuff uh, but the thing is, like you were saying, it's like the production of these things is gonna be very costly as well. How do we? How do we? How do we? How do we justify it? How do we make it worth it? Well, I mean, looking at solar panels, they're probably the lowest point you could get to right now. And yeah. even looking at Tesla again, they've created shingling for your roof, which is sturdy enough to withstand normal and average issues. I'm not saying tornado, but I'm saying like. You know, hail, snow, wind, rain, all that jazz, and still produce energy for your home. Yep. And if every home in the country had them, and oh, they, be fantastic. it was readily available, and there weren't, there wasn't so much red tape behind all of the coal, gas, oil companies that like just bar all of this stuff. It would make for an extremely, extremely more open and free market to see everything go along with. But you're Again, you're fighting behind all of this money and greed and power that just is out of the reach of the normal human being. Yeah, there there is certainly a bureaucracy, uh, bureaucracy uh, stop to allowing this kind of thing to happen as well. Um, as much as Tesla gets funding from the government, there is the red tape to the product oh, beyond yeah. that, which I find so interesting. So I won't go venture down that road too much, but I will say... Um, that yeah, I mean, if 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 it if they were so readily available, what would change in the energy, uh, our energy sources and the grid and everything? Would be really interesting. It'd be really cool to see that change. And I mean, we're starting to see in Rhode Island. I don't know, the outside world is is is, 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 is aware of this. Uh, Rhode Island is the wild, wild west of solar energy at the moment. Oh my god! And uh, I know, right? And we've been hearing this de- this debate for um, probably over a year now, give or take. Yeah, right. And 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 so if you have a solar panel, <coughs> so you can get money off of your uh, electric bill. Your electric bill because you feed back into the grid. Right. Now, <laughs> imagine if you had if everybody had solar panel tiles or roofing and and it's okay. So what happens? Yeah, to National the Grid loses out. I would all be so that. happy if National Grid went out of business. I hate them. They raised oh, rates seventeen percent in January. Yep. My bill went from oh cool, it's a solid like seventy bucks a month, and you know I can plug in my AC every summer, and I can turn on my electricity, I can use the lights and all that jazz too. I'm paying almost ninety dollars a month to almost a hundred dollars a month mm-hmm. for all the normal stuff, and it's just like why? And they're like, mine's oh, it's like, convenience. It's like it's not convenience. Mine's like one hundred thirty. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yep, but to I, I don't know, guess to come back all around and, like, fossil fuels, I guess, is a good way for me to connect it. Like, you're more or less the person who's finding all of this, like, how society's more or less lasted back hundreds of years ago. And, like, even hundreds of years ago isn't exactly saying too much, like, thousands of years ago. Like, as you said, 4,000 years was, like, one of the older... Oh, one of the sites, yeah, like, I mean, when, when you're looking at the peopling of, of North America, I think right now it's fair to say at least 15,000 years ago, right? But who, who knows what's, how much further back it goes, Yeah. you know? And, I, and I've been telling people this, like, I, it's not my business to say how, how long ago people were here. Yeah. I, I, I like to look at archaeology like, like almost like CSI, right? Here's the crime scene. Here's what, hap- here's what you have for evidence. Let's see what we can do. And in archaeology, it's like, okay, we have the artifacts. What can we reconstruct these? You know, what can this artifact tell us? What's the story behind it? And what can we reconstruct to see that past as much as we can? 
And, and even when we do that, we're only looking at a glimpse, a little sliver of what's happening, right? Like if I were to, do, okay, you know, if, if, if 100 years from now, I had, a, I had a time machine, 100 years from now, I come back to this house and I excavate the house, I'm going to see a glimpse of certain things that happened in this house. I'm not going to see the full narrative of you living here. Or... Some buried Gokus here. And like if yeah, time, exactly, if right? time stop, you'd see all of his little statues, a bunch of PBR, and like <laughs> us sitting here talking to... No, exactly. Yeah, right? And it, But you wouldn't you wouldn't get these experiences. You just yeah. get these, these moments in time and these articles that you own and these possessions you have. And uh, it's kind of it's kind of interesting. I'll, I'll throw this out to the audience. Hi, audience. Um, <laughs> all 29 of you. All 29 of you. Um, but like, okay, think about this. There, okay, when you got a pizza in the past, like I, I've gotten pizza in the past. I think these two have. When you get the pizza box, you have the pizza in it, and then there's that stupid little plastic thing that keeps the top of the lid of the pizza box from getting into your pizza. They don't do it anymore. Yeah, no, we do. Oh, you do? Yeah, we still do. Bar- oh, okay. We don't, we don't, we don't say the name of the companies though, just because you know. If, pizza if, Co. If it ever, so the Pizza yeah. Co. Um, <laughs> they they still use those those little tables. So, but think about this. Things go differently, you know, pizza's packaged differently and those little things go away. A hundred years from now, who people are going to wonder what these little plastic tables were. Well, what are these for? These little doll tables? What's going on? It's for little people. Yeah, for right? For wrestling yeah. action figures and he chokes them. <laughs> yeah, no, he was using it, yeah, he was using it in, in the cage match. And, 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 so, and so that's the kind of thing, like... And even as an archaeologist, we have to think about how does our interpretation affect the story. So with me working with uh, the Mi'kmaq and other indigenous groups that I have in the past, you want to try to get their perspective and their culture, uh, their cultural perspective in on it. And the ways to do that is to look at the language, because the language is the theoretical perspective in which you can see how it was. And then the cultural memory is that method of how it was carried out. So these stories that are being said are thousands upon thousands of years old and they're telling you how they walked across the landscape which isn't the same landscape we know but it's because the sea level rise yeah. oh that land bridge isn't we used to walk from a to z but that doesn't exist anymore because the water levels rose but that story still exists and that's really really interesting so it talks about how the environment was and how potentially it could be even worse so we really need to listen in, and uh, I don't know. That's kind of one of the angles I take personally, but maybe I'm a rarity. I don't know. I'll have to talk to other archaeologists about it. <laughs> maybe we'll have another one on one day. Yeah, maybe. Probably not. No, probably not. Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you, did you uh, I'll I'll do a little bit a semi self promotion while doing the question. But what do you guys think about um, Viking lore? Or Viking stuff found in Rhode Island, because you have the Viking Tower in Newport, and now there is that Viking runestone in Wickford. What is it? Yeah, they, you ever, they you found ever seen a runestone out in. Oh, there's like, like the Narragansett, the Narragansett runestone that the Vikings were in North Kingstown. Oh wow! I know, right? Isn't it just like a is stone with a bunch of like, some, like signs no scrubbed into it? Okay. Truth of the matter is, this is my opinion. Deal with it. Uh, the story was, is that in the 60s, this guy was like, well, he was a kid at the time, he goes, eh, I don't want to do graffiti. Graffiti only lasts, like, eh, so long. I want to do something that really speaks to something. So he, he wrote up, he, he, he read up on, um, runes, and he started doing it on this rock. And then this, this group that does, I'm not going to name the group, they do heritage stuff. And, uh, they found this, and they go, oh, this was a Viking runestone. And it got into a whole debacle, and... Story short, it's now in the middle of Wickford Village. And I'm happy it's there because it's a tourist destination. It brings up a lot of curiosity. It certainly has become an artifact in and of itself. From an archaeological perspective... Is that what's in from that restaurant and everything across from where I did? Yeah, so, like, so yeah. right next to Shana's and right next to the yeah. old library, it's like right in there. They made a really weird, wonky presentation. But people go to it because they're curious. Um, I'll tell you right now, Vikings didn't use that rock... It's a sandstone. They wouldn't have used that for runes because the runes they wanted to last longer, and it doesn't really it doesn't really look right, and um, and it also apparently speaks of this raging river. There's no raging river. Dude, imagine being that guy and being like, 
Hey, asshole. Oh, Stop no, no, he, he, he totally, I think he, he there's like, there was in the, you can look up the province journal, it's, uh, I'm not going to say his name, but he, he did comment on it and kind of was like, well, semi laughing, I, I think about it. Um, the Viking Tower in North King, uh, in Newport, excuse me, that's, that's actually, um, the first governor around was named Welcome Arnold. Uh, he was an ancestor of Benedict Arnold. Why would you name your kid Welcome? They named their kids back then Welcome, Thankful, Oh, yeah. Next time you're in Newport, do you go often or any time? No, if I had the chance, okay. I'd burn it all to the ground. Oh, perfect. If you, <laughs> Next time anybody's in Newport, uh, I don't mean that against Newport. I'm not trying to promote burning the ground. It's terrible. <laughs> Family's from I don't know. It's anyway, fine. <laughs> go to Farrell Ave. It's really funny. It's named Farrell Ave. And that's the common uh, burial ground in Newport. Walk around and look at the headstones because the people's first names are really interestingly and fun. So, oh, like, cool. thankful, you know. And in the God's... <laughs> God's Green Acre or God's Acre is there, and that's where uh, uh, African slaves were so buried. Dumb names as like well. Northwest. Well, maybe it's to some degree, but anyway, <laughs> too far. <laughs> <laughs> so, Welcome Arnold actually discussed. He was the governor of Rhode Island, so he didn't really have to report this, but he talked about how he had an old wooden mill that fell over, and then he built he he built this one of stone. And now all these people are coming out of the woodwork. It's a Viking lighthouse. It's a Viking council house. The Vikings met here. Nope. No evidence. Uh, yet the Viking hats are still sold in that area. Of course. And next, right around the corner from the Viking hotel, you know, it's like, okay, this is getting a little, this is getting a little far fetched. Um, but there were, I mean, Vikings did land in North America. We know one thousand, yeah, just before one thousand eighty. Christopher Columbus and all that. Oh yes, yeah. kind of like. Yeah, there was a this. small settlement in Newfoundland on the northern tip. It's called Lansa Meadows, and they were there for about ten years. And they were like, yeah, no, this is this is not going to work. The population is dead. So they went back to Greenland, I think, that potentially partially Iceland, but they certainly went back to Greenland. And the thing, the story doesn't really stop there. Uh, there is evidence, and it's been confirmed uh, that it's an authentic find. Uh, in Maine, they found a Norse coin amongst uh, basically what is a uh, Native American trade center and hub. So all these different groups are trading, and it all funnels into this one site. So were they being nice and being, like, living there and trying to live with the Indians? Oh, no, no, no. Native Americans. Native Americans, sorry. It's okay. But, uh, no, no. They, 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 called, they called a group they didn't like, Scralings. Oh, so there, so they, so there was actually some animosity to some so groups and maybe potentially to friendliness extent. to others. It doesn't... They didn't go to the extent, like, the English did and just destroy all of them. No, no, I, I, no, the Vikings didn't go out and destroy them. They're outnumbered. Yeah. Right? So by the time well, summer comes around... the disease over, too, so... We don't know. Really I mean, they yeah, probably might have, the but we they probably know. weren't, like, to the point of where, like, here's a blanket! <laughs> no. It happened. I mean, I think it... it one of the things they actually talk about at Lanza Meadows is uh, the Vikings had milk. Oh, And okay. cows. So maybe they traded milk, something ephemeral that we can't find in the archaeological record. Maybe that's what they traded them for. Um, Isn't it kind of like tomatoes in Italy? Kind like of, yeah. Italy never really had tomatoes until, you know, they Marco came to Polo America. Marco Polo and, yeah. Oh yeah, and then, yeah. And then, and then, that whole bit. then, you know, spaghetti actually became a thing. And it wasn't, you know, just sauce, oil, and some fish. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's, like, the, like, sp oil fish. yeah, like spaghetti, like, everybody thinks, it, Italian food, spaghetti. That's not nope. at all the, the tippy top of what an Italian cuisine's like. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh. So the Vikings were there for like 10, 10 years in Lansom Meadows, and they didn't really have the best uh, interactions with some Native American groups, and then they did potentially with others. We don't quite know. For the most part, probably not. And um, now I'm trying to catch myself here. So yeah, they're around for 10 years, they leave, and then they find this Norse coin in Maine. It's been authenticated that it is, but it's after the fact that their, their occupation in Newfoundland and now we're starting to potentially think that in Greenland there was the, the Norse were still there, the Vikings were still there, but they they were going back to Labrador in northern Canada for timber, because they always they wanted to get all the the timber to make stuff in Greenland and Iceland that didn't have the timber. That makes sense. So maybe they may have traded the coin, or it could have been left, and then it was traded southbound after the fact. But it shows that there was some continuity uh, with the Norse slightly afterwards, but. Um, it's kind of a blank between 1,000 and then, you know, what we're taught in America is, is uh, Christopher Columbus in 1492, but even the Canadians aren't really listening to that. They go 
to John Cabot, who discovered Newfoundland and like Nova Scotia in like 1497. We're American. We don't know about that. Stuff. I know, right? <laughs> and it's yeah. So Christopher Columbus is like this in American schools, and then it goes, oh, the first Thanksgiving, and. <laughs> Which wasn't like, a Thanksgiving. It was the thing. No, no, it was it was it Lobster was like fish, cogs. Yeah, it wasn't like what we think. It was like more seafood and deer and tur- like than turkey, and it was like a oh okay, we're gonna make an alliance and we're gonna be you know, on on the Wampanoag side, who are the people that are part of this. They're like oh we have allies now. You're gonna become and you're gonna pay rent for us to you kind of use the land and we're gonna be tribute and all this stuff. And they had a certain culture and customs that the the Puritans just had no idea existed and this is the whole thing with the english of just taking the land and being like what do you mean and this builds up into the wars yeah you know both the pequot war in southern and southern england and then king philip's war that just sweeps all of new england uh it's just cultural differences that they just butted heads in human nature to some degree yes some degree yes but yeah but the 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 viking stuff is interesting because i always there's always that going around and um Recently, uh, they were claiming that there was a second Norse site in Newfoundland. Uh, that's been publicly confirmed to not be the case. And I was I was privileged enough to be able to uh, be interviewed in in saying that yeah, the archaeology community was a bit skeptical uh, about the claim. But uh, yeah, Norse stuff usually <laughs> every time I'm on a site, there, there's someone that's like, "Have you ever found anything that's uh, like a Viking?" <laughs> Uh, no, no, I haven't. If I if I did, I wouldn't be working here. I, I'd be I'd be at some big institution or something. Um, and then the I recent, have a magazine. yeah, right. And then the recent thing is is uh, with is it the fourteen twenty one? I think is the book. I'm not trying to promote it. I'm just saying it exists. But there's one where they're trying to prove that the Chinese were the ones that first colonized and came to the New World. And I'm sometimes getting the question now if. Um, the Chinese were here first. I can and see that. It's, it's 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 an interesting, it's an interesting question. We have absolutely no evidence for it. Um, the well, story like, is great. I mean, it's a great, it's great, it's a great story. But we just don't have the evidence yet, or at all, or even to prove that they were here. So it's well, like if you push back far enough, there has to be a point where, even, not, I'm not saying near the Bering Strait, but when the Bering Strait. Oh, had, they certainly were there. Yeah, like there was slightly more. Oh, there was certainly there was them slightly the less room. Them yeah. and the Russians were certainly doing contact so, trading over that. Oh, that's certainly a thing. But for for the Chinese to have gone all the way to the other side of the coast, yeah, that is something. Is something less a bit possible. of a, yeah. But there's people that are claiming that, like certain indigenous groups uh, and certain First Nations, like the like the Mi'kmaq in particular, learned certain customs and traditions from the Chinese. And it's like, ooh, where are you going with this? And where's the evidence? There's none. There's no evidence. So it's like, okay, this is just this is just good fiction, you know? It's just a good story, but, but I mean, it's not adding up. Every degree of fiction is based in some degree of reality. So I'm not I'm not saying that it's possible, but it's an, a highly improbable thing that could happen. Yeah, and that's the way we have to play it in archaeology, yeah. right? I cannot say that a hundred percent that they didn't. But I can say with a high it did no. But I can say with a with a ninety nine point nine percent confidence. I can say with that rate of confidence that they probably didn't do it at that time, and they probably weren't there at that time because there's no evidence to it yet. And it just and, and even when you ask the Mi'kmaq themselves, there's no stories about this kind of stuff. So, you know, it it, it kind of comes to the thing like okay. Probably didn't happen. Um, but yeah, like it, archaeology has certainly been an interesting field, and it always certainly ends up being kind of that Indiana Jones. Um, God, that always that always comes up. That and it, Indiana Jones and the Do you find dinosaurs? Which is great because I used to lie to people about that. Yeah, I used to, I used to, I used to say, yeah, I, I find pterodactyl bones all the time. I, I used to lie just to keep it going, just to see the fun. Of, of them, like, trying to... See compute. people lose their brains. Yeah, like, uh, really? And I'm like, no. I turn around and walk away. And, uh, but I, I don't do that anymore. Um, I kindly, I kindly say we don't dig up dinosaurs necessarily. We sometimes deal with fossils because humans have found fossils in the past where you use them for tools or they find them and they use them as emblems or something. And they're found in, in the assemblage we find. So we have to deal with fossils to a degree. But I don't, I can't tell you, like, a certain species 
of dinosaurs in the past, other yeah. than like Jurassic Park stuff, you know, <laughs> or or Land Before Time. Yeah, throwback. Uh, <laughs> little foot, little foot. Yeah, it's, I got a star leaf or whatever oh, the fuck. Yeah. yeah, childhood. Yeah, it's all right. I think Petrie was the annoying one. Spike was Spike was my actor. favorite. Spike was a dumb one. The voice actor for Petrie actually died in a really horrible way. Oh no. Thanks. Yeah, it's a story we'll get into in a different time and different place. But besides the fact. Yeah, yeah. Time to ruin a, uh, something for your childhood. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> really, really want to end it on a good note like that. It's, uh, all, it's always a good note. Yeah. If your finger gets stuck, I am gonna laugh at you. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing with the bottle, and, I'm, and it's. And... <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's, it's just stuck. average. It, yeah, this is just average, right? Yeah. Um, well, I'm glad medium. you guys have made me feel. They're probably like this is the quietest chat's ever been on an episode. <laughs> Maybe because yeah. you guys have a lot more knowledge of all the stuff than I do. Well, so I, I have a lot of just like baseless and useless knowledge that like just comes from me being a kid that never had anything to do with other people and I was always like cool it's a new book or you know Jeopardy showing something cool and different <laughs> so like when I was always interested in something I was always like oh I'm gonna just read up on it but huh. yeah well I hope everybody else learns as much as I did about all this fascinating stuff you got any questions about like the topic anything I don't know you guys kind of Cover up some really cool stuff. Be like anything, dude. Like, it, what's the craziest thing you found? A masturbating our, like arrowhead. <laughs> I'm gonna kill it for like one second. There's a dude in Pompeii. They actually found the body of a guy covered in ash who was jerking off. <laughs> <laughs> they found the body of a dude who was like beating it. He's like, you know what? I'm gonna die. This so happening. might as well. I I will elaborate to a degree. Uh, Pompeii was is is known as like the red light district of like the Roman Empire. Yeah, they were like... unsurprising. I've been there myself. It is covered with like basically the equivalency of poor material. I mean, there 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 is literally prostitute houses on like every block. There is phallic symbol. It's it's insane. It's everywhere, and yeah, and it's like that's what you've uncovered is, uh-huh. is that portion. A lot of sailors <laughs> coming in, and and that that kind of gets the business going. Um. <laughs> Craziest thing I've ever found. Because typically, that's a good question, because we usually get like, what's the coolest thing you ever found? And we all hate that question as archaeologists, because like, it's not just one cool thing. Everything There's so many cool. cool things. The craziest thing I've ever found. The like the most off the wall. Like, like just found. like crazy weapons, or just like... Uh, I don't know, like the dude beating off in Pompeii. <laughs> Like, I hate to say it, but like, um, that's probably the craziest thing you can find in, like, ancient world stuff. It's like, yeah, dude was jerking off and, you know, a volcano erupted. Who would have guessed? Craziest thing ever. That's going to take a bit. Uh, How was your un- day, Chris? Unexpected. We can speed it up. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> we'll, speed this, we'll speed this up. <laughs> um, I, I can't name it off the top of my head. I'll, I'll say it if, I, if it comes to mind. Because I'm like venturing through everything I've ever found in the past. I, you know, you know what? I'll answer that with a pretty common one. But if I come up with a better one, I'll tell you. So, you ever seen the movie Shutter Island? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? And uh, so I actually did a dig on the property where that was filmed for a oh, portion right. of it. It's actually in Massachusetts. I'm not going to name the area. But what we kept finding in the woods, which was creepy, was these wheelchairs they're not just wheelchairs though they're strapped in wheelchairs it's like straight jackets almost straight jacket wheelchairs in the woods and um so uh, a colleague of mine who passed away rest in peace greg uh challenged me to a jbc contest which is a junior bacon cheeseburger you buy at a certain fast food restaurant can't even name and uh what it was was like can you fit the jbc in your mouth at once well, i was with schmendies he could do it I couldn't. Why? I lost the bet. So he put me in one of these really... We- he got, like, the swampiest one we oh found. Oh, my God. And he's, like, sitting in it. You had to sit in it. I have to take a picture. So it's on Facebook. But, like, I'm like, oh, I really don't like this. Because it's creepy because, like, all the stuff that happened to it. So I guess that's, like... I guess that... The, the, <laughs> cool. Inadvertently, the craziest thing. <laughs> you find a lot of scary stuff, or is it just, like... Well, okay. So there actually is a Facebook group known as Freaky Field Finds. And they find, like really weird stuff like they'll find like people messing in the wood like messing around in the woods and they'll find like animal skulls in certain weird places what do you or, mean like messing around like like which sometimes you find sexual objects in the woods 
and then you come across when you're on a dig. So you're talking like woods porn, like normal kids find. <laughs> what? <laughs> there was an entire subject we brought up once. Oh, I, I have no idea. I'm, yeah, out no, of, it, I'm out of this one. It's a callback to an old episode. I'm sorry. Uh, like, uh, sexual stimulating <laughs> objects would be found in the woods. Uh, articles of clothing. Um, sometimes you find, like, animal remains in certain weird areas. Like, uh, the weirdest one is child dolls with their creepy faces staring out at you from, like, the dirt and stuff. All right, that's nightmare fuel. Yeah, right? It is. And then, like, sometimes, like, they find mannequins. Like, so people are messing around with, like, mannequins in the woods. And sometimes they're, like, th- like, I remember seeing one of these on, on one of the posts. is like, there's a mannequin, like, sitting down. At, like, what looks like a fire. Like, they had, like, somebody had a bonfire and was, like, drinking and there's a can. And there's a mannequin there sitting there in clothes next to the fire. But when you look in behind it, there's another mannequin peering around from the tree. <laughs> and if you didn't, and it, like, that's just nightmare fuel, like, creepy. Like, when do you, you see, like, punch in the face or something, Do you ever you get know? super freaked out with any of this stuff? Or is it all just, like, you have, like, a logical head on your shoulders and... Oh, like, it's just freaky that it, like, someone did, like, yeah. it, it kind of reminds me of, like, um, like, Fallout, like, coming across these kind of mm-hmm. scenarios where you're like, oh, like, that's odd, like, and it kind of has a story all the time. Uh, one time I was on a construction site, and we found where, like, stolen fencing had gone, and they turned it basically into this ganja kingdom, and why I say that is, like, there was a lot of uh, marijuana paraphernalia found in the area, and there was a staff. That was known as, it was, it, like, literally in Sharpie, they called it the 420 staff. And there, there's, like, a seat. It was, it was like, they just walked out and left. And, like, there's, like, a scepter, and, and this guy, or whoever, had, like, at least three bongs in this area with, like, a gas mask bong. And this is here. In the middle of the woods in Massachusetts, like, maybe, oh maybe 200 feet from the construction site. And wow. you're just, like, that's kind of clever, but, like, why are they coming back? Yeah. Like, that's the thing that got me. It was, like, okay, they just walked away. Like, where are they? Like... How how is this how is this gonna turn out? Wow. So yeah, like stuff like that, I guess, is kind of like the craziest we find. It's not the artifacts per se, but it certainly speaks to someone else's past. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I don't know. Humans are just like a weird like species. We are. Like we certainly are. Like you gotta look into it. It's like we can kind of cognitively like process information. Like we have that upper brain where it's like. I could pick up this stick and hit that person with it, but how would it make him feel? Whereas, like, you got the monkey brain that's just like, hit him, do it, throw the, your poop the, at the, him, the, hit the him. The instinctual versus the rational. You think about you think about future and past. Uh, tend, yeah, know, what's, what's gonna happen? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting stuff. So yeah. Boy, thank you for all that wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Chad's just kind of at a loss just, for words because yeah, he has no idea just, what's going just, on anymore. <laughs> yeah. That was a lot to process. I hope everybody enjoyed it. It's, oh, all right. it's, it's always a lot to process. Your four yourself, PBRs yeah. are like probably building up in your bloodstream yeah. and your bladder. So I'm like, yeah, I gotta pee again. Get yeah. off my back. The old man. <laughs> the old turd. I got the bladder of an ugh, cancer. <laughs> Well, thanks for the interview. Uh, <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be surprised how often like it comes up in just like the episodes. But yeah, like that was definitely awesome. I like to have more episodes like this. I would love to have you on again. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Like for, um, for our first actual like guest, guest, it's probably gonna be a high bar to like step up to for anyone else. Yeah. Good. And Granted, there's definitely more episodes, like more conspiracy, more type episodes that me and him are planning on doing. Oh, conspiracy stuff is always fun. Well, like we yeah. don't have that high of a bar to set, so anything that you can bring to the table, like we're. I'll, I'll try. Yeah, I, I could. I could. Our A files. Oh my god! It's gonna so be the first episode of it. Spoilers. Chad wants to do a whole like aliens thing, and I'm just like. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. aliens coming to visit. <clears throat> No, like, history of aliens and, like, abductions and all the different types of aliens. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I've said the same thing, but I'm also of the separate mindset of it's probably happened, but there's also a reason why aliens probably wouldn't come here, and it's because we're just a dumpster fire of a species. Or are we, like, the biggest show for them? Are that, we, like, the reality show? That so, or... It's stuff I, the stuff I think It's like about. Prometheus, and it was just, like, that one alien who came here and was like, pr- pr- Prometheus and Bob. Yeah, that was a good, that, just like all, like, it's like all over some like random monkey somewhere, and was just oh, like boy, we got we got spawned. 
Look, I'm just, just saying. Just, just for the record, I do not condone the ancient alien episode <laughs> on history. Not one bit. Aliens. Because, yeah. No, seriously. Oh, how did the Coliseum get built? Aliens. aliens. It, it's like, you, you just, you, you, like, the Nazca Lions were to talk to aliens. It's like, no, This is going to be, all. like, a very more logical... Yeah, it's oh, actually we're gonna, gonna do an aliens episode. We're gonna do an AI episode with robots and all that. The AI is the one yeah. that I'm like really like, that's his invested episode. in. Yeah. So my episode would that's me be too. explaining all the stuff I know about aliens. Yeah. Okay. And his episode would be the AI, AI. and all that. AI. We can oh, actually man. aim for fifteen and twenty being those specifically. You heard it here first, folks. Fifteen so this might and twenty. Might be the first A Files episode of like ancient Vikings and archaeology. This might might actually be episode twelve. Last episode was episode twelve. This is thirteen, bro. Look, I can't oh, keep okay. things straight anymore. Alcohol got in my blood. No, this will be. This could be A Files one. No, I think we'll just make this consecutive. But you'll see it. You'll find out. Just look below. Anyways, this has been John, and by far, like, leave comments. We'll be able to like send them to him. He'll more than likely like try to peek at the episode. Canada, being like, yeah, I'll see. I'll see I to what degree I can communicate with people. But I'm it's open door policy with me. So yeah, we'll see what we can do to the show. I would definitely say like share this to everyone. Share this in the last episode with everyone you know because. Yeah. I definitely wish you the most luck on your oh, adventures. Oh, God, yeah. Well, thank you. I hope this new job and everything... I hope if, if I get it, I, I've been, I've been looking it. at it. You're a good guy. You're I more know, than likely but, will. but I, I th- thank you. You're welcome. Uh, there's a stiff... Honest, stiff competition. There's a lot of a lot of qualified candidates. Um, good luck to them. Seriously. Whoever gets the job, whoever gets the job, in all honesty, will do a great job. Um very modest also no no it's it's the truth it, it is honestly the truth um but yeah no there's just so much going on and uh it's really exciting it's really exciting to see where archaeology is going so it's all right uh glad to have him glad worst to comes to worst you've always got a seat on i am honored yeah to be, to be here at, on this seat with the it's menagerie of yeah it's menagerie of, of, <laughs> of just nerddom yeah i love it uh but anyway, yeah. Well, I'm glad to know you have probably one of the most important jobs. Most underrated, yeah. but important jobs. <sighs> yeah. I, I go with underrated, but important. We I would never know, evolve uh, without knowing what happened with our past and all that. So eh, uh, yeah, you're trying to un- trying. lock all that knowledge. 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 Someone's got to make the book so it doesn't right. uh, repeat itself. True. Right. True, yeah. We have idiocracy going on here. Yep, yeah, true. Uh, Sports drink. Not getting into that. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Idiot. How was the next three years? Yeah. <laughs> Christ, it's going to be a thing. God. Chad, why? Yeah, I went like two episodes without doing it. I anyway, know you did. I'm Chad. That's Chris. This is John. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hope you guys had fun. Adios. See you later. Bye. I'm getting the nuisance caller.